Okay, so before we start talking about probability in any detail, first I need to lay down some basic terminology. And the most important first thing is what's called an experiment. So an experiment is basically some procedure that I undertake that produces an outcome. So for example, I could um, roll a six-sided die or for you D&D people, call that a D6, and I could record the number that I see. Okay, You're going to see lots of die rolling here in probability. Or I could roll two six-sided dice, and I could record the sum of the numbers that I see. So that's going to be a number from 2 to 12. Or I could have the same uh, procedure in some sense, but I use a different mechanism to get the outcome. So I could roll the two six-sided dice, and I could record um, both numbers. Um, so for example, here I have 36 possible outcomes. The thing I saw on the first die, and the thing I saw on the second die. Moving on to coins, another thing you're going to see a lot in probability. Uh, so I could toss a coin five times, and I could record the number of heads. Or I could um, keep tossing my coin, until I get a head, and I could record which toss that was. So it could be the first toss, the second toss, or the tenth toss, right? Or I could toss a coin three times, and I could record the head tail pattern that I see. So I could get head, 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 or I could get tail, tail, tail. So these are all kind of experiments that result in what I would call a discrete outcome, right? A head or a tail, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Things that I can kind of count on my fingers. But there are lots of probability problems where we have a continuous outcome. So for example, I could say something like, um, uh, I could record the lifetime of my hard drive in days. So that hard drive could last for 5.9 days or 300.65 days, right? So that's a continuous number. And so instead of being uh, something I can count on my fingers, there are basically an infinite number of possible outcomes, right? Um, I could. Um, pick two numbers between 0 and 1, right? So, you know, you pick a number, you pick a number, and we record both of those picks. Or we could have a procedure where the uh, result kind of depends on, um, you know, previous uh, little sub-experiments, right? So I could say, you know, pick a number x between 0 and 1, and then uh, pick another number, y, between 0 and x. So I have uh, a two-dimensional kind of outcome, and the second dimension of that depends on the first thing that I saw. So things that we learned from, from these examples, right? So we learned that um, outcomes can be either discrete or continuous. And we also learned that um, we can have finitely many or infinitely many outcomes. Okay, so throughout this whole discussion we're going to have usually a part where we talk about discrete stuff and then a part where we talk about continuous stuff 
and usually the discrete stuff is easier and the continuous stuff is harder and we're going to kind of alternate between these things throughout this whole set of lectures. Okay, second important concept of this mini lecture is the sample space. Okay, so the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. So basically in every experiment exactly one of these possibilities occurs and I can't get more than one occurring at once and exactly one of these things has to occur. So it's kind of like enumerating all the possible outcomes of the experiment. So for example uh, let's go back to the things that I talked about um, earlier these experiments. So the sample space for experiment one rolling the die is a set of numbers one through six, right? These are my possible outcomes for rolling the die. When I roll the two dice and I add them up, well, the smallest number I could get is two, right? Snake eyes. Or I could get all the way up to 12 boxcars, right? So here I have a sample space that contains 11 outcomes. In the case where I'm rolling those two dice, but I'm recording each of the outcomes individually, then I have 36 possible outcomes, which I could enumerate like a set of 2D vectors, right? So I have kind of first die comma second die, and that goes all the way up to 6-6, six, six, right? That's the, you know, the 36th outcome. So in the coin flipping experiments, I was saying, okay, toss a coin five times and record the number of heads. And so in that case, I could have no heads, one head, two heads, all the way up to five heads. The next thing I talked about was keep flipping the coin until I see a head. And how many flips does that, uh, and record the flip where I got the head, right? So I could have seen the head on the first flip, the second flip, the third flip. And actually there's basically no endpoint to this set, right? So this is a case of a discrete sample space with infinitely many outcomes because there's no upper limit to how many flips it might take to see the head. And finally, the case where I'm re recording a pattern, right? So here I could have eight possibilities, right? Head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. So here's a case where, again, the sample space is not numerical. It's still discrete. I have eight possible outcomes, but these are patterns and not numbers, okay? And if we look at the continuous experiments we talked about, so the sample space for experiment seven, the lifetime of my hard drive, well, um, it could be as low as zero, right? It fails the day that I bought it, or it could last forever, the mythical, amazing hard drive, right? So a different way of writing this in set notation is it's the set of T such that T is at least zero, right? So this is a continuous sample space, right? Continuous set of outcomes. In the case where I record two separate numbers, that's like basically saying uh, I have a number between 0 and 1, and I have a number, another number between 0 and 1. Or a different way of saying that is I have a set of x comma y such that uh, x is in this range and y is in this range. And actually, when I'm talking about continuous sample spaces, I can sometimes draw a picture, right? So here I could say I have the x and the y, this is one, this is one, and this box is the sample space that I could have for that experiment. And finally, we had that kind of uh, contingent experiment where I said, okay, I have um, the set of x, y such that x is in 0, 1, and y is in the range 0 to x. And how does that look if I was to draw it like a uh, you know, a box. So I have x going between 0 and 1, and then I have this line here. So it's saying x could be anywhere in here, but once I pick x, y has to be strictly, you know, at or below this line, right? So here I've got a triangle instead of a square. Okay, and so that's the basic uh, idea behind experiments and sample spaces, and the next video we'll talk about how to concatenate those into what are called events. Okay, see you next time.